See, check this out. I've got my oscilloscope lead right here, and this is ground for my oscilloscope. And let's say I have a circuit that's being powered by this bench power supply, and I want to see what voltage is being put out by a circuit. So I want to connect my oscilloscope to earth ground as well. Well, if you see, when I do that, it causes problems. It causes a short, because there's current flowing from this probe to this probe. Tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner, tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And today, we're going to be taking a look at this variable voltage power supply and attempting to repair it. But first of all, check out this cool new desk that I made. This desk is awesome. So I have over here my section of the desk that I'll be using for electronics projects. I've got all my test equipment and parts here so I can build anything. And then over here, I've got my section for schoolwork. So this fall, MIT is going to be all remote for me. And so I will be doing all my work here, which will be pretty fun. But now, let's get into the video and see what's wrong with this power supply. So this is the power supply that is in question. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, I see. I have it plugged into my Variac, and I have my Variac set way too low. Okay. So now let's see the real problem. You can see that this power supply is turned on, and when I turn up the voltage, you can see the relay starts clicking, and the voltage is jumping everywhere. And it keeps clicking, but once it goes up here, then the voltage stays relatively stable. And this goes up to 18 volts maximum. So we wanna look in here and see what's causing that relay to click like that at a lower voltage and attempt to fix it. Another problem that I have with this power supply is the fact that the positive lead is connected to ground. So if I hook my multimeter lead up to the negative output of this circuit, and then I touch it to earth ground, we see that we have a negative 10 volt voltage. So there's always a potential between the negative end of this circuit and earth ground, which is kind of annoying. So I'm going to see if I can fix that inside this power supply. So I just pulled this thing open, and the inside has a lot less stuff in it than I thought it would. Now pulling this front piece off, if it ever comes off, I saw something very sinister, the black smoke that comes from when a component breaks. So let's pull off this circuit and see if we can spot what may have burnt. This is very interesting. So I figured out a little something about why this power supply may not be working, and it comes down to this capacitor right here. So this capacitor bridges ground to the positive terminal of this power supply. And if you see here, there's nothing less than a short between it. So here I was blaming the manufacturer for grounding the positive terminal of their power supply, but in reality the problem was a shorted capacitor that was just doing it by itself. So that is a problem that I can fix. I'll just pull out this capacitor and solder in a new one. I just pulled a replacement capacitor out of my drawer, and this one is 0.1 with 100 volts. So this 0.1 means 0.1 microfarads. And this capacitor here is 104, which means 10 followed by four zeros, which means this one is also 0.1 microfarads. That's 10 with four zeros of picofarads. So 100,000 picofarads is 0.1 microfarad at 100 volts as well. So this capacitor should be an ideal replacement. Now when I turn on the power supply, you can see that the negative lead doesn't ground to anything. Ah, oh, perfect. Alright, now that that capacitor is fixed, let's take a look at the problem we were having with the relay. And so, if you remember, the problem was that this relay was chattering. It was clicking about when I turned the voltage adjust knob. And now you can see that when I turn the voltage adjust knob, it works a lot better. 
And I think that it works a lot better because I fixed that capacitor. I think that was playing into the problem. But nevertheless, you can still hear that there's this weird little background noise in the relay when I adjust it, which is fine, but it is a little bit annoying. So let's take a look at the schematic for this power supply and see what might be causing that. And just take a look at the circuit and how it works. So this is the schematic for the bench power supply that I had. I think it's really cool that the company actually put their schematic on their website. Not many companies do this, especially in this age where a lot of people are trying to prevent people from fixing their product. I think this is awesome. So if we take a look here, you can see that we have the multimeter section of the bench power supply that reads out the digital voltage and the part that reads out the current. Then we have these circuits down here that actually do the work. So you've got this thing, and this is the main transformer in there. You've got your input from the wall, and then you've got a couple different output windings. So this output winding here is kind of the main output winding that powers your output power rails. And then you've got this common winding that goes down to one end of the bridge rectifier. And then you've got these two windings, which go to a relay and then to the other end of the bridge rectifier. And I looked and winding eight is about 12 volts and winding nine is about 22 volts. Now the reason it switches between these two is that the power supply is running a lower voltage. It's more efficient for the power supply to switch to the 12 volt rail because it only has to step down eight volts to a lower voltage as opposed to stepping down 22 volts to a lower voltage. But let's say you bring your power supply up to a higher voltage, then you need to switch to a higher voltage winding of the transformer so it can adequately produce that. So it goes through this bridge rectifier, filter capacitor, and then it comes to these two transistors. And these transistors are where the real voltage regulation takes place. Uh, these transistors are connected through a connector to a couple of different operational amplifiers and such over here. This is what provides the signal and feedback for these transistors that regulate the voltage. So this is the relay control circuit here. And essentially what the relay control circuit is trying to do is it's trying to switch this relay based off how much output voltage the power supply is putting out. So for instance, if the power supply is putting out 18 volts, the relay needs to be in one position to maximize efficiency. So here we have the relay control circuit. You can see that it comes from a separate winding and it goes through a rectifier, a filter capacitor, and then a 12 volt regulator before it comes into this little bit of circuitry. And you can see that we have a line coming from the negative rail of the power supply, that being the output rail. It goes through a resistor into this one transistor. Then this was kind of odd to me at first that there was only one line coming from this part of the circuit into this part of the circuit. And then I realized that the reason why is because there's another line here that's actually not listed on the schematic that goes from the positive output rail uh, out right here to the negative rail of this power supply. So if we go to this schematic, it's a little bit easier to read how this transistor circuit is working. So we see that we have a voltage divider it's between this 12 volt regulated rail and this rail which changes with the output of the power supply. Now looking at these two resistors, if we calculate uh, what the voltage drop is going to be across them, we can see that there's going to be a 60% voltage drop across the first resistor. So for instance, if we have the power supply set to output 7 volts, we're going to have a negative 7 volts on this rail and a positive 12 volts on this rail, which means there's going to be a total of 19 volts across this voltage divider. And 60% of 19 is 11.4. So there's going to be 11.4 volts across this first resistor, which is going to put the base of this transistor at approximately 0.6 volts. Now, if we change this rail, we change the output of the power supply to output more voltage, then this rail is going to get more negative and bring this base of the transistor more negative, shutting it off. Now, if we decrease the output voltage of the power supply, this rail is going to get less negative. It's going to go more toward zero, which is going to bring the base of the transistor higher, which is going to turn it on and activate the relay. Now, the reason we hear that weird noise in the relay 
is because of this top part of the power supply. So as you turn up and down the voltage of the power supply, it'll cause an AC ripple on the output. And that AC ripple is transferred through this line into this transistor that controls the relay, which will amplify it and then we'll hear that little bit of noise on the relay. Now there's a couple different solutions we can use for this problem. The first solution would be to use an LM393 voltage comparator and stick it right in here before the transistor and it will read the voltage coming from this part of the circuit and turn on the transistor once it hits a certain specified cutoff point. That would be a little bit more complicated solution, but a more simple solution is to add a high pass filter across the relay. So that would consist of putting a capacitor and a resistor across it. Now what would happen here is that AC voltage ripple would go through the capacitor and resistor and be shunted and not be heard in the relay. Yet the DC voltage that needs to go into the relay coil would still be allowed to pass through there. So I think this way is going to be the most simple and easy way to make this work. So let's put a capacitor on there and see how it sounds. All right, so this is my miniature low pass filter. I've got a 10 microfarad capacitor attached to a 33 ohm resistor. And I'm going to put some heat shrink tubing on it before attaching it to the underside of this circuit board. Here it is all installed. I've got the capacitor and resistor all mounted to the circuit board right across the relay. So let's put this back down and power up the power supply and see how it sounds. So I just finished installing the circuit board again and it sounds great. Here, let me adjust the voltage and you can hear it. As you can hear, the relay is only turning on and off and it's just making those switches very solidly and you can't hear any kind of noise coming from the relay. So, this power supply seems to be functioning properly now. Well, my power supply works now. The faulty power rail to ground is now fixed, and that relay sounds amazing. So thank you for watching, and stay tuned for my next video. See you later!